Alright, Jee, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Assalamu Alaikum, and hello everyone. My name is Afzal Shah, and today we are here with the third session of the partnership. We have already covered uh, the basics of the partnership in session one and the appropriation account in session two. So, in this third session, we are going to discuss about the fixed and fluctuating capital in detail. So, today's topic is going to be related to the fixed capital and fluctuating capital. And then under the fixed capital, we have to create two different accounts, which are the current account and the capital accounts. We'll be discussing that. Then we'll be doing some sample questions related to the fluctuating capital method as well as the fixed capital method so that you are able to grasp the idea that what basic difference is there between the fixed capital method and fluctuating capital method. Now the question is why we are studying these two methods because sometimes in the Cambridge he asks us about attempting the question using the fluctuating capital method and sometimes the same question is asked to solve using the fixed capital method. So that is why we are supposed to understand both of the methods in detail. It's quite easy but let's see how it, how it goes. So fixed capital account. So what is fixed capital account? As the name says, fixed capital account is the capital account when you are trying to keep the investments or the capitals fixed throughout the time. Now the question arises, if we want to keep the capital fixed throughout the time, where do the things which are going to have an impact on the capital like the profits which you already know that profits are going to be added into the capitals in sole trader drawings are going to be deducted from the capitals in sole trader so right now in the partnerships we had the things like interest on capital interest on drawings drawings itself and the profit and the losses so these are the things which are going to have an impact on the capital either it is going to be added to the capital or it is going to be deducted from the capital. So when we are following the fixed capital account, all of these additions and deletions or deductions are not going to be the part of the capital account. Now the question is, if it is not going to be the part of the capital account, where it is going? So we have to create a separate account for that and that account is called as the current account. So initial investment, remains in the capital account and the rest of the entries like profit, interest on drawings, interest on capital, partner salaries, all of these th things that are going to have an impact on the capital are going into the current account. But that's the only thing which is different in the fixed capital account and let's see what we have said over there. So partners capitals remains fixed for a long term. For example, if partner A invests 50,000 and partner B invests 30,000 into the business, so we are going to prepare the capital accounts and keep 50,000 for partner A and we keep 30,000 for partner B in that capital account and we will leave that. We are not going to do any entry in that capital account. All of the entries other than the capital account, for example, profits, losses, interest in capital, interest on in drawing, salaries, these are going to be added or subtracted from a separate T account, which is showing the initial investment was the capital and it is going to be in a separate account. This separate T account is called as the current account, right? But in the fluctuating capital account, as this is the old method, which we have already used in sole trader as well, and we have used it in the partnership as well that in the fluctuating capital account we just have one capital account and in that one capital account all of the entries are treated in one T account. So let's have a quick summary of this. In fixed capital account as we said that we are going to prepare two accounts. First is the capital account, second is the current account. Under the capital account there is only one entry which is the initial investment made by the owner. So if there is an initial investment made by the owner, it is going to be the part of capital account and rest of the entries, rest of the entries are going to the current accounts and in current accounts, rest of the entry means all of the transactions which are going to increase or decrease the capitals. I have given you the examples already increase or decrease is 
basically due to the interest on drawings, interest on capital, partner salaries or the share of the profit at the end. So this is the fixed capital account method. Two T accounts, one capital account, one current account. Under the fluctuating capital accounting method, what we do is we just have to create one capital account, initial investments plus the transactions increasing or decreasing are all the part of that one T account, which is the only T account of the capital. So in the fluctuating method, we combine all of the entries in fixed capital, we just separate the initial investment and do the entries in the current account. Now let's have a look at the example. The example says, when Shibli and Sajjad agreed to form a partnership on 1st January 20, they decided that Shibli would contribute 50,000 as a fixed capital and Sajjad would contribute 100,000. So, Shibli is investing, the partner A, the name of the partner is Shibli who is investing 50,000 into the business and the second partner whose name is Sajjad he is investing 100,000 into the business. So this is called as the initial investment. Let's do it on the Excel sheet. So over here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to mention capital account over here. So the first column is for the first partner, which is known as Mr. Shibli. Second account is for the second partner, which is called as the Sajath. Similarly, on the credit side, first account is for Shibli, second account is for Sacha. right? So I have placed a green color in the background for Mr. Shibli, debit and credit entries and debit and credit entry for Sajjad in kind of reddish. So let's start. So the first entry as we suggest, as we said that 50,000 was invested by Mr. Shibli. So for the Mr. Shibli, where are we going to put it on the debit side or the credit side? As you know that the capitals are always on the credit side. The normal balance of the capital is always on credit side. So on the credit side, Shibli 50,000. How much for Sajjad? 100,000. It's mentioned in the question and we call it balance brought down or you can also call it capital or initial investment or you can give the reference of cash if you want it, right? After this, he says that interest and capital would run at 5% per annum. So interest and capital. So we have already solved this question in the profit and loss appropriation. We will just pick up the figures from this because we have already calculated it. So second point was the interest on capital. So interest and capital would run at 5% per annum. So we have already calculated the interest on capital. So we are going to just pick up the figures from this. So the interest on capital for Shibli was 2500. So 2500 interest on capital. So in the perspective of the customer, uh, in the perspective of the partner, interest on capital is going to be given to him and is going to be increased and going to have an increase in the capital. So interest on capital is added. How much? For Shibli it is 2500 and for Sajjad it is 5000 so I am going to place 5000 in terms of Sajjad it is going to increase the capital that is why interest in capital is always on the credit side next is on point number three Shipley would have a salary of 10,000 so we were supposed to give a salary to Mr. Shibli. so salary again added to Mr. Shibli. 10,000 is going to increase the capital of Mr. Shibli, but none for Sajjad because we are giving salary to the Mr. Shibli only. Fourth point says residual profit was to be shared out equally. So we have already calculated the residual share of the profit at the end. Mr. Shibli 1 over 2 and the amount was 33,875 and again same for the Sajjad 33,875 and you know profit is going to be added to the capital. So 33875 is going to be added for both and I am going to say profit and loss account because it is transferred from the profit and loss normally. Then 
we have dealt with the fourth point fifth point is shibli and sajjad withdrew 2000 and 3000 respectively now remember this thing that in profit and loss appropriation we deal with the interest on drawings but we don't mention drawings itself right so in the question drawings is sometimes mentioned or most of the times it is mentioned and we calculate percentage on drawings to find interest on drawings so sometimes the student when they are following the profit and loss appropriation account figure sometimes they forget to add uh, or subtract the drawings in, in the T account because it's not part of the profit and loss appropriation account remember this is the part of the question and see that I am following the points of the question I'm not following the points in the profit and loss appropriation account that's why I'm doing it because so that I, I cannot I should not be skipping anything so drawings itself and interest on drawing has to be both be the part of the T accounts of the capital. So Shibli and Sajad withdrew 2000 and 3000 respectively. So 2000 drawings by Shibli, 3000 by Sajad. Why I am placing it on the debit side? Because it is going to decrease the capital. Drawings decreases the capital. Then the second part of this statement was it was decided that 5% now coming towards 5% interest on drawings so we have already calculated the interest on drawings under the interest on drawing section so for Shibli it was 100 for Sajad it was 150 so similarly just like 100 for Shibli and 150 for Sajad just like the drawings interest on drawings is charged from the partners and it is going to deduct their capital it's going to be deducted from their capital. So these are the all entries which were the part of this question. And point number six was basically the distribution of the profit which we have already done. Right. So these was all the entry. And this is the method which is called as the fluctuating method. And in the fluctuating method, what happens is we pass all of the entries in one capital account of Shibli and Sajad both. This is the fluctuating capital method. Now suppose if this was fixed capital method, what should I have done? Have we done? Just the initial investment, as we have already said, just this initial investment which is mentioned in green over there, this is going to be the part of capital account. Rest of the entries are going to be the part of the current account so this was the fluctuating capital method so i am going to copy this paste this so that i can give you an idea this was basically the fluctuating capital method now if he asks us to solve the same question using the fixed capital method so what we do is we are going to keep this initial investment as fixed so I am going to keep this initial investment over there and I am going to shift all of the entries or I am going to remove all of these entries. So this is now what is called as the capital account. Just the initial investment is the part of the capital account and the rest of the entries other than this is going to be the part of another account which is called as the current account. Right. So in the current account let me place the titles okay so in the current account all of the entries other than the initial investment because initial investment is already mentioned in this section so other than the initial investment all of the entries like interest and capital salary profit and loss account this is going to be in the current accounts and drawings and interest on drawings all of this is going to be the part of current account so what's left just the initial investment is not there just this initial investment is the part of the capital all of the rest of the entries are part of the current account that's the only difference between the fixed capital and the fluctuating capital in fixed capital you create two two accounts and the first account is for the capital you just mentioned the initial investment you keep cdbd same every year because you are not doing any entry in it, it will be same every year. And the, all of the adjusting entries which are going to increase or decrease the profit is going to be the part of the current account.
Now, one important thing is sometimes assume that if there is a loss other than the profit, as we know, the capital account cannot be negative. The capital account cannot be debit on the debit hand side. It, it will be always on the credit side. Right? It cannot be abnormal. But the current account can be abnormal. For example, if I place, if I say rather than at this profit, there was a loss of 20,000 transferred to both of the partners. So what happened over there is you, you can see that the balance brought down is now shifted on the debit side. The capitals can never be on the debit side, but current account can be on the debit side. And what is the reason behind that? Because current account is just about the adjustments. Just like the bank account can be an overdraft, similarly a current account can be an overdraft. Right? But the capital account, which I'm talking about over there, this capital account, or under the fluctuating capital method, this capital account cannot be on the debit side. If it is on the debit side, there is a mistake in your question. So capital account cannot be debit, but current account can be on the debit side, just like the bank overdrafts. So these were the important things which were uh, meant to be discussed. Hope you are clear. If there is any question related to the fixed and fluctuating capital, I've tried to solve the fixed uh, capital method very quickly. If you want me to solve a separate question separately for the fixed capital account, I'll do that for you. Just let me know in the comments and I'll uh, solve a complete separate question for the uh, fixed capital account. But the only difference between the fluctuating and fixed capital is under the fixed method, initial investment is mentioned in a separate T account which is called as the capital account and all of the entries adding or subtracting is going to be the part of the current account. So now obviously if you have gone through this lecture if you are very clear about it you can solve the worksheet which are available at the website and uh, for the next video is going to be related to the new topic so now as the topic has been closed so rather than moving on to the next topic I would suggest you to go for the worksheets first and then go for the topicals uh, which are available at the website as well as you can order it from the website as well if you have already have the uh, topical with you games of accounting season one you can now solve the questions of partnership from that topical because you have completed this section of partnership so any question related to the partnership can now easily be solved now actually there were three chunks which we have discussed a quick revision for that First was the basics of partnership, second was the appropriation account and third was the fixed and fluctuating capital methodologies. And that's all from my side and I'm going to sign off over there and if there is any query on your side, you can let me know anytime in the comment section or anywhere on the social mediums. You know how to catch me. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye bye.